Arizona Today, featuring topics, events, and interesting people from all over East Alabama. Hosted by Carl Brady. Now, let's get right to the show. Here's Carl Brady. Hello, everyone. Welcome into East Alabama Today. I'm Carl Brady. Thank you so much for being with us on today's program. As always, we'll start off with a little contact information, let you know how to get in touch with us if you have an idea for our program. And the best way to get in touch with me is to send me an email, cbrady at tv24.tv. We want to hear about uh, all the things that are going on in your community and in your neighborhood. We cover nine counties of East Alabama uh, with TV24. We cover part of the Coosa Valley area with tv Forty-seven. So that's a large coverage area. So the best way for us to know what's going on in your community is for you to let us know by sending me an email. See Brady at TV24.tv. We want to know about uh, the fairs, the festivals, uh, fundraisers, special events, all the cool things that are going on in your neighborhood. We also want to know about the interesting people who live in your community. Maybe you know someone who's a writer, an artist, or a musician. Maybe they have an odd or interesting hobby, and you think they would make a great guest for our show. We would love to know more about those folks, so send me their information uh, again via email, cbrady at tv24.tv. And while you're online sending that email, be sure to check out our entire website, tv24.tv. There you can learn more about all of our local programming uh, on TV24 and get replays of the biggest news stories of the day if you happen to miss the TV24 News at 9. So come on back. We're going to be talking about Phase 2 of the Emergency Alert Radio Distribution. And we'll have that for you next on East Alabama Today. Welcome back into East Alabama today. An interesting show for you today, particularly if you live in Calhoun County. We're going to be talking about phase two of the emergency alert radio distribution program. And uh, we have a couple of guests on set with us today to do that. Steve Swafford is with us. Steve, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. And uh, Dan Long as well, EMA director for Calhoun County. And Steve, you're with Cleburne County. And uh, you guys have been involved with this emergency alert radio distribution well over a year now. This time last year, we were going through the first phase of the distribution program, which was uh, more of the outlying areas. People as far out as Etowah County received those uh, radio systems. How did that go? Kind of give us an update on that. And how how did that turn out? Did it turn out as well as you expected? It it actually turned out better than we expected. Um, Going into it, we had hoped to at least touch 60 percent of the communities Mm -hmm. and when we talk about communities we're talking about the residences businesses churches schools and before everything was wrapped up we touched over 80 to 85 percent of the population in that six county region we distributed 108,000 emergency alert radios during phase one last year wow So that really did go very well, getting that many radios out and getting the word out to to people. Now, phase two of that is is a more focused approach. Uh, Talk Mm -hmm. about phase two and and where we stand with phase two. Phase two differs because it it covers a much smaller geographic area, but it's a very densely populated area Mm -hmm. as well. It's um, and Dan's going to touch on the communities that make up phase two. Um, but with that, we hope to, to add an additional 50,000 emergency alert radios to the six-county region. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those will be in Calhoun County. And again, these radios are distributed absolutely free at no cost to, to members of the public. Well, that's true. As you said, in phase two, we're concentrating on what they call the IRZ zone in my mm-hmm. county. Uh, and what that encompasses as far as geographics is the Bynum area is where they've been working at, the Uniontown area, Coldwater you got Oxford, Anderson, Weaver, and it goes all the way out into Ohatchee in that particular area, uh, Alexandria area. All those areas is what's uh, within the IRZ uh, area for the mm-hmm. for the, the, the radios in. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we're starting off the same way we did last year. One of the good things about this, though, it makes it a little bit easier than we did phase, two, uh, phase one with, mm-hmm. is it's only for one county. So that allows us to go ahead and pre-program the radio already set that where all the people got to do is take it out of the box, pull the tab, and it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. That makes it a lot easier, and that's why we're also, instead of the mail-in process that we had in Phase 1, we have actually delivered the radio to the person's house. Right. Okay, going to make sure they get it uh, in those particular areas. And as Steve already mentioned, those areas, if you look at those areas, it's very densely populated. 
And this is not just for residents, for businesses, schools, all those people will be getting those radios throughout that area. Mm -hmm. so. Now, in phase one, there was a, there was a process where the, uh, the, the members of the community had to participate by filling out a card and sending it back in. Is, is something like that happening as part of phase two, or is it different in case they remembered how they did it last time? During phase one, the condition of the funding was that it had to be a pool-based system, whereas a, a resident had to actually request a unit mm -hmm. in order to receive a unit. And, and that was primarily because we had never anticipated the amount of uh, folks requesting a unit as mm -hmm. what we experienced. So going into phase two, we knew we were, going to, we were going to have extremely high saturation. So what we wanted to do was to eliminate the resident or the business having to request a unit and just do an automatic delivery. Mm -hmm. And that is going to work uh, much smoother throughout the distribution period that started in mid-January and runs until the end of April. So what can people expect? Uh, just a stranger coming to their to the door and knocking on the door? How you know people are concerned about those those kind of things. So what can you know, people expect when their radio is being delivered? Our local contractor is Warning Systems Incorporated. It's a company that's been in the Greater Anniston Oxford area for a number of years now. Uh, their offices are located on Hillier Robinson Parkway, mm -hmm. and they have distribution teams that go out in the communities. They've already been out in Ulaton, Coldwater, the Bynum area. Mm -hmm. Uh, this week, I think they're actually uh, working in the Anniston area. But uh, they'll be wearing the WSI uniform. Uh, their vehicles will be placarded on the side with the WSI information. The units themselves will be delivered in the shipping box mm -hmm. inside a clear plastic bag. And if, if the distribution team doesn't find someone at home, then they'll either hang it on the doorknob or maybe inside the storm door mm -hmm. or on the patio. It's depending on the uh, particular location as to how the unit will be left. So that seems like it is going to work very well then. And here's a picture of uh, the Phase 2 radio. Now, if you remember the Phase 1 radio, this, the, 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 the radio looks different. Is, is there something different about the radio, or is it just like, you know, the car models change the way they look every year? Is it the same kind of a situation here, or is there something different about this radio? Well, Phase 1 and Phase 2 occurred one year apart. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were bid separately. Both radios, the first alert that's in phase two and the Midland unit that was part of phase one, were pre-approved by our technical specifications committee that designed the request for proposals. Mm -hmm. So the radios do essentially the same thing. It's almost as if you're comparing the, the Ford to the Chevrolet. You right. know, they're, they perform the exact same function. It, it's just as things turned out, the first alert uh, won the second bid. Oh, okay, so basically, just just it looks different because it's a different company providing Correct. the radio. The quality is the quality is the same. The warranty it it we required the same three year warranty in phase two that we required in phase one, mm -hmm. and that's something that some people may not know about because we're so accustomed to to the electronics that we buy from Target or Walmart carrying a ninety day warranty. Right. But all of these units come with a three year warranty, so we encourage residents to save that warranty contact information because it could be beneficial to you down the road. Yeah, if your radio uh, ever does uh, have a problem. Now, explain how the radio distribution program is part of the CSEP program, the, the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program. This all has grown out of the same, <laughs> same umbrella, basically. Yeah, basically what happened is, is that me and Steve about uh, three years ago come up with this idea of looking at some way that when we start phasing out from CSEP, okay, the tumblet radios that was used during CSEP, which, as a matter of fact, the company that's doing phase two, mm -hmm. also take care of those radios. So we were looking at some way we could leave the citizens with something that would uh, take care of what we have to face on a day-to-day -day basis in Alabama, especially in Central Alabama, which is weather. Mm -hmm. It's one of our main things, okay? The NOAA weather system is actually a very good system in using for alerts for us at EMA. So we thought taking away the gray box is what we call it, the right. gray box that people have throughout the community, taking that away from the citizen and giving something in return it still does the weather because we also use those radios for tornado warnings mm -hmm. out throughout the system. So doing that. And also doing this as, as time has went by over the 20 years this program has been around, uh, the NOAA weather system has improved. We mm -hmm. have...